गुड मॉर्निंग स्टूडेंट्स आई वेलकम यू ऑल इन द डिस्कशन ऑफ एम इकोनॉमिक्स 2017 एंट्रेंस एग्जाम क्वेश्चन पेपर ऑफ बनारस हिंदू यूनिवर्सिटी इन दिस वीडियो वी विल हैव अ डिटेल डिस्कशन ऑफ टेन क्वेश्चन सो लेट्स स्टार्ट विद द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन एंड द फर्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज अदर थिंग्स रिमेनिंग द सेम वेन एन ऑन्टरप्रेन्योर मनी आउटले इंक्रीजेड हिज इक्म पॉइंट मूव टू सो वेन एन ऑन्टरप्रेन्योर मनी आउटले इंक्रीजेज he will his equilibrium point will move to a higher iso point curve entrepreneurs money outlay increases therefore the iso cost line will shift rightward and accordingly producer will attain equilibrium on a higher iso point curve now next question question number 2 in a production process the input combination has 30% of fixed assets 40% raw materials and 10% labor the quantity of all other inputs except fixed assets has been doubled the production process would be subjected to so if all the factors would be raised then it would be returned to scale but here only a few factors are raised while the fixed assets are kept constant therefore it refers to law of variable proportion and law of variable pro proportion is a short term production function in which only some factors are raised all the factors are not increased now next question question number 3 average variable cost curve what is the shape of average variable cost curve so you all know that average variable cost curve is a u shaped curve and therefore first it is it slopes downward and then it goes upward and the shape of avc curve is u shaped due to the law of variable proportions and the law of variable proportion is a short term production function this average variable cost is calculated by total variable cost upon output and the variable cost is also called the variable cost is also called direct cost or prime cost now next question question number 4 the vertical distance between tvc and tc total variable cost and total cost is equal to the vertical difference between tvc and tc is equal to total fixed cost and total fixed cost remains constant therefore the total fixed cost curve is a horizontal line parallel to x axis and therefore the gap the distance between tvc and tc always remains constant and both these lines tvc curve and tc curve are parallel to each other now next question question number 5 shut down point for a firm is a situation where it's where will firm stop production where will it attain shut down point so shut down point occurs where ar ar means price where ar is only equal to avc when firm is unable to recover even its variable cost then it will stop production and the where ar is equal to ac that refers to break even point at break even point ar is equal to ac and at shut down point ar is equal to avc now next question question number 6 in price discrimination a monopolist lowers the price at lowers the price at the market where there is so price discrimination is followed by monopolist in price discrimination monopolist charges different prices from the different buyer for the similar products for the same product and he and monopolist follows this practice for maximize the maximization of profit but monopolist will be able to maximize the profit only when the different markets have different price elasticity now he will charge lower price at the market where there is higher elasticity and in this market he will also sell more of the quantity on the other hand the market where elasticity of demand is low there he will charge higher price and will sell lesser quantity so price discrimination is followed by monopolist and there are three degrees of price discrimination price discrimination of degree 1 degree 2 and degree 3 now question number 7 the king demand curve theory explains that even when the demand condition the king demand curve has been given by paul and swiggy it explains price rigidity in the oligopoly market 
and it says that even when demand conditions changes price remains stable question number 8 an upward sloping demand curve can be expected for upward sloping demand curve is the exception exception of downward sloping demand curve which is a normal curve so the upward sloping demand curve can be in the case of giffen goods it can be in the case of precious goods and therefore the correct answer will be third a and c giffen goods are those goods those inferior goods which have positive price effect and negative income effect while precious goods uh, are those goods which demand rises by the demand increases by the very rich person as their prestige value rises it is it was explained by wavelength and therefore it is also called wavelength effect now question number 9 the law of equi marginal utility states law of equi marginal utility which is also called gaussian second law or it is also called law of substitution says that where the ratio of marginal utility and prices of the different commodity ratio of marginal utility with their prices of a commodity is equal to the ratio of mar marginal utility and price of the other commodity at that point consumer attains equilibrium so the formula will be mux upon px equal to mu y upon py equal to mu z upon pz equal to mu m this is also called gaussian second law or law of substitution and now the last question two factors are given x and y iso quants shown in the above diagram exhibit exhibit these are iso quants i q1 i q2 and i q and these iso quants are l shaped are right angled so iso quants are right angled are l shaped when the different factors are perfect complementary of each other and they will be if they are perfect complementary they will be used in fixed proportion so the correct answer will be b and c so in this video we discussed this 10 question in the next video again we will take more and more questions keep on learning thank you